Welcome, everybody. It's Friday night, and it's time for chaos. Even if I wanted to change the opening to the show, I can't. I can't because it would feel weird if I didn't say that, even though I'd like to change it. It's too late. It's a thing now. Uh, speaking of things, some of us are in New York. Kate and I, that's it. Just two of us. Does that count as some? Oh, yeah. I think four is some. Two of us are in New York, and uh, we had an earthquake today. This isn't a big deal to our California friends, but uh, the this was like the day the earth stood still for Kate. Kate, uh, how did it feel for you? <laughs> well, I'm upstate, so I'm further from the epicenter, which was in New Jersey from you, but mm-hmm. I was like in the middle of doing something for work, like something tedious, and I thought a handstand. that like, yeah, and then I thought that like a bear was walking around on my roof, like I... <laughs> Like I just had my roof done, so it was like similar sound, but I was like heavier. And I was like, is that a fat squirrel? Is that a giant bear? Like what? And then it went away. And then I was like, okay, I gotta finish this task. And then I forgot about it. And then my friends texted me and I was like, oh. And then I immediately went downstairs to where Michael was and was like, uh, hey, did you uh and since I'm always like anxiety filled and like catastrophizing, he just immediately interrupted me, was like, it was the heat clicking on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so like, he, no, there actually was an earthquake. And <laughs> did you feel it? I guess you did. It wasn't the heat. So I went through a period of uh, before I was able to better manage my stress where I would be laying in bed and I'd feel like the world was shaking and it was just my body. And But it felt <laughs> like the room and the bed were shaking. And I was like, oh, I, I've got to get this stress under control. And so as I was, I was leaning over in my desk chair to grab something and I felt it. I was like, no, I thought I got rid of this. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. That was, I think that was the world. And so I went upstairs to my wife and she was like, did the, did the world just shake? I'm like, was I the think world's was feeling your stress. Yeah, I'm just how powerful picturing you, are. you like going to your next therapy appointment and just being like, I thought it was me, but it was actually the rest of the world shaking this time. And they're like, <laughs> breakthrough. I thought it was my fault line, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a very, very strange feeling, but it's commonplace, obviously, in in, in L.A. And, and Ross, you were saying as we were warming up, the top of a building you were in used to shake like a what, – what did you say? If, uh, this is my, um, my, my, my now wife's uh, then girlfriend's apartment at that time. It was on the fifth floor of a pretty old like 1920s apartment building in Los Feliz uh, made of a famously earthquake-resistant brick. And um, – <laughs> Yeah, it felt as though you were in the crow's nest of a ship at sea, just like <laughs> wobbling back and forth. It was one of the most unnerving feelings I've ever felt. But it's, um, it's designed to do that. Like, yeah. that's so that so it doesn't just fucking crumble. It's crazy. But it's weird. It's that's weird. very weird. Yeah. Um, I also was at, uh, years later, at um, the Upright Citizens Brigade in here in LA doing doing an improv show and- a murmur went through the audience and we're like, did we say something offensive? And then we real and then we realized that all the lights were like jingling and rattling. And that suddenly I felt seasick standing up on my on the stage and there was an earthquake going on mid show and it subsided. Oh, a gift. Did the show go on? You bet it did, baby. <laughs> That's, that's how I because truly that's how I'd love to go out is uh, having my head caved in by a falling uh, stage light mid show oh, no. <laughs> while pretending to be like a snail. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, while singing an improvised song from the perspective of like, I don't even, yeah, I don't even know. This is a total pivot, but I, I, yeah, I don't know if it was you that told me about this cult documentary. We were talking about documentaries. Was it you that said escaping twin flames? Oh, I brought up Twin Flames, yeah. Yeah, Twin Flames. All right, so I just watched it, and I Ooh, uh, and it's it's fantastic. And then I realized, mm-hmm. I was like, this is what Upright Citizens Brigade is. <laughs> it's like the exact same thing. <laughs> it's the exact same setup. Yeah, <laughs> it I'm- takes a left turn in Twin Flames, <laughs> but it's the exact same setup. <laughs> yeah. Any any improv theater has a little a little dash of cult. Yeah, that's not just, just UCB. A little, that's just a little soupçon of, yeah. of cult. I was, I was like, oh, man, they are on to something. This is... Uh-huh. I got a, I got a new plan. I'm going to roll out for the glass cannon next month. Yeah, um, an all encompassing uh, <laughs> system that 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 becomes your new lifestyle and uh, with the right. Right. Is the perfect cult leader. Troy I mean, will pick your match for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got, I will pick your <laughs> divine masculine. Uh, Rob, do you have a uh, what's the story in Denver? It's all mountains. So there's other earthquakes there. 
I don't fucking know. I haven't lived here long enough. I, no. I mean, I was, you know, 18 years in L.A. had my share of wibble wobbles. Yeah. Uh, here, I think it's, I don't know, are there avalanches? <laughs> I don't know what I should be concerned about. Part of the reason we moved here is to try to get away from as many natural disasters as possible. Because I was freaking the fuck out during the pandemic. And L.A. was uh, burning that summer so <laughs> yep <laughs> so just that no the housing yodeling. market i was like no thanks um but uh yeah snow can be cold a lot of snow yeah that's that's pretty much it dry that's the biggest threat it's just craggly gross hands god it's just having warm. been in denver for a few weeks previous to this the dryness is the dryness is yeah. it's, it's in it's unbelievable <laughs> when i way. moved here i was uh, 275 pounds <laughs> it's just evaporated. That's all water weight. Yeah, it's just all gone. Yeah. You're just slowly um, desiccating. You're I'm just, just turning into a mummy. Just, yeah, yeah. Rob, are you wearing matching pants to that top? I have the matching pants. I did not put them on. It's, it's, very, be- it's very Beastie Boys, and I, I'm yeah. just picturing you in a full. Uh, That's usually suit. my my go to move. I mean, I have athletic pants on. They just don't match the current athletic top. I like the hat too. Thank you. Uh, this this band is a little all over the place, but uh, I, I I just suffered a natural disaster. So you survived I'm, I'm, I'm a, a little, natural disaster. It's, that's yeah. true. That's Hold true. your head up high. I, that's I had to go right back penis. into a meeting talking about like KPIs and stuff, and I'm like, I don't think any of this matters. The earth is <laughs> underneath me. It's I'm a not. weird thing yeah. for when you first was that like your first. I think it's the first one. 45 that I, years like I, old. I've never felt an earthquake before. I felt a small felt. one when I was younger, but it was so long ago. And I think it was smaller. Yeah. And I was younger. I didn't own my house. So I was I was like, who cares? Um we didn't get a four something and since like the hurricane, I think they, they oh, was yeah. coined in I, LA. I just read it. The epicenter was in Jersey, like Kate said, and it was the third strongest uh earthquake in New Jersey history. Probably, there have probably only been ten total, but still. I don't know. You guys got earthquakes. I did. Yeah. And I grew up there. Sometimes. Shit. (laughs) Every once in a while, I'll I'll feel like sometimes in the middle of the night, Troy, from what you said, like sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night thinking an earthquake is is happening, but I'll look over and said, just doing that thing. It's like, it's like shaking the bed. It's like, it's the big one. Oh, it's just her. Okay. I go back to sleep. Um, it makes you think about how, like, it's, it's such an unsettling feeling. You're like, what? That I've never, I've never experienced that before. Some of you've experienced it multiple times. But like, when you're playing games like Call of Cthulhu, and you say, like, the Earth begins rumbling beneath your feet. Imagine it goes on for like minutes. Mm-hmm. That feeling, mm-hmm. and and then whatever you're experiencing visually on top of that. Uh, I don't know. It was it was cool to experience that way. Within ten minutes, I was like, this is what it must feel like when uh, Cthulhu I walks understand. in the room. <laughs> Uh, anyway speaking of Cthulhu big shout out to our friends at Chaosium for sponsoring uh, this this wonderful season the last few eps have been uh, all timers uh, in terms of some of my favorite stuff that uh, not only we've ever done on the network but that I ever got a chance to uh, be a part of and play in it's been so fun uh, kind of discovering the season with you guys and there's six episodes left how are we going to do it how are we going to do it in six Mm. I'll tell you how we don't stop we just, we just don't stop. We just you're the only. You're the one in charge. That's we true. do like a multi multi part finale. That's what we do. Welcome <laughs> to the season finale today. I can do it <laughs> uh, last week, last week picks up. Uh, we're still at uh, Eagle Grange, and uh, the psychic was on fire uh, after Literally. channeling <laughs> uh, people from the past. Uh, it's. Uh, some other entity took over uh, poor Miss Jasmine Pink uh, and then she burst into flames. Both Vaughn and Feyruz, uh suffered a, a bout of madness. Feyruz just reached out towards the flames and then you guys were... It was just a big... I imagine it being a giant mess. That's how I pictured it in my head. Uh, Carter's grabbing the curtains or whatever, putting over there. Margo is doing stuff. And I mean, eventually, uh, we now see Vaughn in bed speaking with his brother who uh, uh, as far as Vaughn knows uh, was going to be making a surprise uh, visit to his mother and happened to come right around the time when uh, Vaughn was here so Vaughn begins speaking with with his brother and uh, the mother walks in is like who are you talking to we then cut to the garden where Carter Feyruz and Margot are sort of 
uh, collecting themselves after this and uh, realizing that Vaughn is not well and it may may not be safe for Vaughn to continue with the mission until he gets the treatment that he needs. Meanwhile, Carter notices uh, some guy uh, sort of spying on them from over near the uh, little uh, graveyard area. Um, you go over and you you find uh, the, is it the nephew or the cousin of uh, old Mickey Mahoney? I can't remember. He's his nephew. Yeah. Mickey Mahoney's uh, nephew, Desmond, uh, also works for the Scoop. He had checked into Eagle's Grange, which is now a bed and breakfast, stayed in the library, which was Vaughn's old room, and evidently looked through all uh, Vaughn's journals and books and is very well apprised as to what you guys are up to. And it seems like old Desmond wants in. Well, um, the uh, the mother, Vaughn's mother, comes down, asks to speak to Feyruz, and kind of explains, like, I, I he, he can't go on. Um, he needs to rest. He's not well. And uh, Feyruz agrees. Feyruz goes up, speaks with Vaughn. Vaughn is just not there. And uh, long story short, you decide to move on with Desmond and leave Vaughn behind to recuperate. Safety in numbers. Uh, you feel like this guy seems on the up and up. And uh, you need you need that extra that extra support. And so you head back uh, in the direction of London, stopping in the uh, city of Derby to check in on old Henson Manufacturing. Uh, when Carter and Margot snuck into the Penhue Foundation after hours, found this secret room, and there was a receipt uh, for a safe that was built into this Henson Manufacturing. And for some reason, it was important to Edward Gavigan. Um, so you're just following up on it. You get there, you see some buildings behind a large wall, and you speak to the guard posing as uh, the people who installed the safe. The workers need to check the safe. There's this faulty thing. And the uh, the guard is like, I can't let you in, but uh, I can set up an appointment uh, with my boss tomorrow morning. And so you see all the workers and uh, guards file out. Guards seem to go one way. The workers head to the pub and you move on. And then of course our final image is we see uh, Vaughn uh, being sedated and then getting up and looking out the window and his brother joining him. We pan over and see that his brother passed away years ago, lost at sea. So now we pick up back in Derby, outside of Henson Manufacturing. It's around 5 p.m. You know in questioning the, uh, the, the uh, guard there the two night watchmen are coming onto the premises to guard the place at night. So some information you found, I think, with an extreme success at Charm or whatnot. You got that little tidbit of information. So if you did want to try and uh, do what the Mystery Squad does best, you're going to have to contend with two guards. Um, you're on the street. You just met up with Margo and Feyruz. They were in this, like, abandoned building looking down. They heard a little noise as they were coming out, like, someone watching them it was just an animal you look you don't see anything what do you guys do hmm well I for one think it's strange that a manufacturing plant has this much security it's a little suspect not to mention the walk-in safe situation but we got an appointment tomorrow we got a legitimate appointment so I feel like we don't need to break in just yet until we get inside. We're about to get in legally tomorrow. Yes, well, we sh Yes, uh, I suppose we should wait until we see what they say. And you know that's hard for me to say, not breaking into a place. I'm just concerned about uh, the time limit that uh, we're on. We have only until uh, the, ne the next full moon to get this sorted out, and we're spending another day out here. Oh, right. When is that? Isn't it like Thursday or Friday and the full moon's Wednesday or something? Tuesday, right? The full moon is Tuesday night, I believe. And it is... It's Wednesday. Some day of the week now. I think you've got li less than a week. Two days away. Um, well, to like whatever tomorrow Friday. is, is a weekday because the plant is open or whatever. We made yeah. an appointment. I have my notes from yesterday, or not from yesterday, the last time we recorded. And it was Wednesday 
February 11th. So is that it is the day that we're in right now. So it's Wednesday going on Thursday. So all the... <laughs> What is yeah, it that the full moon has to do? What is it that the full moon has to do with any of this? Oh, uh, uh, we'll catch you up. Oh, oh. Uh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> and if <laughs> and if you don't want to break stop? into to the to the building there, if the if, if the two watchmen are enough to put you off, well, that's not. What I for I for one would be into speaking to some of the uh, some of the workers. What is it that they're actually manufacturing over there? And what opinions do they have about having so many guards looming over them, making sure that they're punching the clock the right times. Oh, it's like, yeah. maybe go to the bar that they're all going to and see if we can talk to them? That's right. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I mean, I like the bar part. We are very good like at talking part. with locals at bars. Experts at this point. Oh, Des, wait till you see us flirt. Man. <laughs> we are except <laughs> Across at the gathering board. information in bars. Well then, let's put those uh, skills of interview into the test. See what these um, workmen have to say about the bosses, eh? Mm hmm. Plus, you can drink as much as you want, right? You're Irish. Excuse me? Let's go! <laughs> um, as we walk, I might pull a, um, whoever's close to me aside. Like, do we know exactly what they manufacture in there? If they're not. What are they actually fabricating at Henson Manufacturing? Well, it's a manufacturing plant, so I thought it was plants. Just <laughs> fake. Desk plants, you know, but no, we don't know. Unfortunately, I never thought yeah. about it, but I don't think I know anything about manufacturing. Oh. I was of the opinion there? that they made safes. Maybe I'm completely. There's a lot of manufacturing <laughs> organizations. There's a lot of wheels within wheels here. Wheels within wheels and safes within safes, moving off into an infinite regress. All right, well, exactly. I suppose this is the sort of thing that we can. Get to the bottom of when we tilt the wrist with some of the fellows who work down the now line. Now, are you gonna? Now, are you gonna be talking like as a representative of the scoop, or are you gonna be speaking more from a place of an independent journalist? Or are you just gonna be shooting the shit, just like you're passing through and you're curious about this big looming factory? Um, I find that um, people are rather reluctant to speak to the press. I just enjoy to, you know. Engage a workman after a day of hard labor in some intimate conversation. Once they've been adequately lubricated by the um, the refreshments at the pub. Hmm? Yeah. Yep. Great. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would be wise to say we're from any sort of particular organization. Especially, I. It, it, it might make them nervous to to speak to anybody, especially if they're a reporter. Hmm. I would imagine. As yeah. well, they should. Um, most publications are look not too kindly upon the uh, the lives and and the welfare of the working man. Maybe we could lead like a workers' revolt, you know, like as a distraction. <laughs> Pass out communist manifesto or whatever, and just get them riled up. Mm. I'll work on that on the side. Let's get in the bar, please. Uh, if you head over to the VTT, I uh, got a couple maps I threw up there. First one up uh, in the top right, you see the distance between London and Derby. Uh, Derby's sort of to the northwest there, um, mm. for those of you interested in geography. And then there's another one, uh, the environs of Derby. You see the Derby Town Center and where the train station is, and you guys went all the way over here to Henson Manufacturing. And if you look uh, sort of uh, on the map and you see like the, the color changes in the area where Henson Manufacturing is, that's because there's lots of um, manufacturing plants in that area. It's a pretty industrial town, um, but there's several different engineering plants of various sizes. Henson Manufacturing, compared to some of the other ones, isn't really that, uh, that large. Um, but you do see uh, the workers from several of the plants all heading to various bars along this little road that's like uh, two and a half blocks away from the plant. So you don't even really need to stealth unless you wanted to. You can very easily get lost in the crowd of workers finishing up their shift at the plant and heading over to uh, the Newcastle pub. Um, you roll into the pub, you walk in, and it's large. Um it's, uh, you know, I'd say there's probably like 40 or so, 40, 50 people in there, and there's more coming in behind you. If you linger at the door for too long, people are either pushing past you or pushing you into the bar, um, and everyone's doing like a shot and a beer, a shot and a beer, a shot and a beer. Um, 
sitting there with the one and one after a tough day. Uh, is anyone whistling loudly with a crowd around them? There is a there was a the same whistler is uh, yeah. he just happens to be <laughs> behind him. We see He's like a tour. tour poster. Yeah, we see all the dates. <laughs> There's a guy watching him with the t-shirt. It's that like yeah, it's like that red, yellow, green like tie dye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's no music. This is, this is a blue collar, uh, blue collar bar. Um, but, uh, you know, people from every walk of life are in here because these right, plants, right. you would imagine they're going to be like straight up workers, but there's going to be engineers as well. And they're all, uh, commingling together, having some suds. All right. Well, let's blend in as best we can. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the WC before I get myself a drink. <laughs> there oh, he okay. goes. Oh, oh, he's look at him. Going. He's literally doing it. I would like to try uh, one of these beer shots that everyone has. Hold uh, on, I'm going to go play a character in the bathroom with Russ. <laughs> 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 Just bring oh, the mic have, with you. Just bring the mic with you. free hey range there, over the, the narrative now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to reinvent this genre. I'm just going to go play it in the other room. Uh, what did you say, Kate? You want to get a drink? Yes, I would like to get a, a beer shot special. Beer shot combo? Yes. All right. Boom. Boom. Brown liquor, warm beer. Ooh, still ah. warm. Okay. Okay. Exactly what I expected. <laughs> you see, a lot of the patrons are like down in a shot and <laughs> sipping on the beer, and then within a couple minutes, ordering a second shot that they then sip along with the beer. Okay. That gets you there quickly. Let's spoken do this like a real then. bartender. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Shot. Uh, you Shot. are the two of you are probably uh, there might be two other women in the bar um, so you do stand out and you do get uh, looks from some of the gentlemen uh, this just might go like it did at the town <laughs> I don't think this might be the place to to be flirtatious I think I think the vibe here is we we hate our employers <laughs> and there's also lots of more people here uh Versus it's being small town. Uh, it's true. Maybe less safe to flirt for information. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go too well. I, I knew we were, you know, showing off for, for our new friend here, but, but he cannot see how terrible we are at this. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet. I think we need to keep him around. I feel uh, like he's safety better. Safety numbers and such. I feel like he's better at it than we are already. Uh, he asked us what the plant does, and I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I, this entire time, I thought they made safes. So who cares? Uh, <laughs> I mean, Maybe that's the thing. Safes. He's got to learn when he gets back from the from the pisser that um, <laughs> we don't. There's certain things we don't care to know. You know, <laughs> and I don't even mean them like is. a cosmic horror kind of sanity sense. I just mean like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Honestly, after the things that we've seen, lizard people and such, who the fuck cares what this manufacturing it's a factory. is? <laughs> but whatever, let's let him play it out. He's got to earn his stripes. Oh shit, I he's do coming! Do like the question? Oh shit! Okay, oh, okay. he's coming. Oh, <laughs> oh we got quite you. Light, quite light up there. Um. You got you a beer shot, here you go. What's Here's the deal shots? in there? Is it just one long trough or are there individual urinals? It's a trough situation, the same oh, Fuck. I saying for one of your, your prissy gentlemen's clubs tilling ass. Your oh, shoulder you know. to shoulder with the, with, the, with the brethren of the steel in there. Favors <laughs> <laughs> turns to Margot, she's like, do men all urinate in a trough together? <laughs> I always thought that they were animals, but it was like a joke in my head, but maybe they are. I don't I know. I had no idea. We can hear everything you're saying. No, it's gross. <laughs> I have this memory of going to Fenway Park for the oh, first me, time same. as a kid. And I, I don't know if it's true, but it's it's in it's in, in my memory that it was like you went into the bathroom and it was just like a giant circle that everyone just stood up to and peed. I think and I, is that was that real or did I, I just think have that dream was a this? deal. Yes. And so you're just I, staring. I mean, you don't have to look at like, across yeah, the. I mean, you just I don't know where you're looking at. Even if everybody's looking down, they're all just kind of crossing the stream. It's together. like a giant toilet that everyone's standing around and playing swords. I, For real? It's, it, it's it's like locked into my memory, and I just think that it's there's no way that it's true. But if you I'm have pretty this memory, sure, it's true because I have the same memory. Unless it's like a, a Mandela effect thing. It's possible. It's just a giant circle, and everybody was like. 
Just find out. Because I just remember, like, this seems Nestle counterintuitive. Nestle into the circle. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Anyways. That's what it's, Any, that's anyways, what it's like. Anyways, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that at the Newcastle. Um, I'm learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> the important uh, thing is just to, to, to make your eyes look anywhere, but um, yeah, just keep keep them down. And if you've got a lock, I see eye contact with someone across the way from you, and just um, don't let the energy crackle too much. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the pint. Uh, <clears throat> you see the uh, the workers um, from Henson Manufacturing. They're wearing like brown or leather they've got like brown leather aprons that they've taken off now and they just have collarless shirts on those flat caps that they've taken off upon entering the bar they're all uh, sitting there uh, talking there's like eight of them uh, maybe before we engage in conversation I'd just like to overhear maybe can we do can I do, do like, like a listen, a listen? yeah absolutely. actually before we do any roll let's roll for some luck oh, oh, there it yeah. is Rob the luck keeper the luck man Rob, uh, the one who's always trying to figure out how to give himself an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I always have that note. And then, uh, over 20 minutes in the app and I forget. But yeah, fail this roll and give yourself a d10 if you do. How? Oh, I succeed. I got a hard success. <laughs> Did you only have like four luck? I rolled a five under 11. That sucks. No. No, oh, wow. we said oh, last week you spent all that luck. You were like, exactly. no, you'll make it. I was like, I'm going to make it back, baby. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Meanwhile, I rolled a 98 over 60. Must be the luck of the Irish. There you go. <laughs> oh, I forget these new characters come with so much luck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I should have peed in a trough. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right, now give me a uh, listen. Roll. Everybody, everybody roll it. Listen. Let's see how lucky I am. Oh, here we go. Fail. Regular. Hard success, baby. That's no, a failure. Um, Hard spirits success. must be going to my head. Not a good listener. Um, all right, so you're overhearing. Uh, you hear a couple things. First, you hear a couple guys like pointing to a newspaper, and the headline reads... Uh, something about the beast of lesser Adele. Mm. And uh, you hear them talking about it. Like, oh, do you hear this? It happened up in Derbyshire? The daughter of the vein? Was it? And you just kind of hear them trailing off and you realize that like it's made the papers here. Um, the other thing you hear them say is just how tired they are. That they It seems like they've been uh, like having to work doubly hard as of late. Well, to no one's surprise, everyone here is just absolutely over their work schedule, being overworked and I'm sure underpaid. But everything that happened in Lesser Edel with the uh, the Beast of Lesser Edel, uh, and, and by the way, Desmond, we will, um, if you don't know, we'll fill you in on this, but it is in the papers and I'm so curious to know what they have printed. Oh, plus I think it'd be good to just get a clipping for our own records. Yes, I, I'm not sure if we should if we should uh, mm. bring it up to anyone here, but it would be, I suppose, easy to get to acquire a copy of this. It would be good to way to enter the conversation. Maybe I don't know how to speak to uh, manufacturing men. <laughs> what do you say? Neither oh, do I. Nice apron. Um, <laughs> You connect with them on a blue collar level, ladies. Yes. It's pretty easy. You start talking sports. Um, oh. You bring up Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, What's a couple that? Other. What? Who's Dunkin'? It, it's he's. <laughs> I have I have my What's third character. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> um, um, let's. Uh, well, we'll just. How about this? Just watch and learn. And I start walking over to some. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just light the cigarette. <laughs> oh, man, I love making stuff. Just kind of says it loudly over a group of employees. You're I like working just... with my hands. He's talking. Right Great there. job. Look halfway <laughs> at you and they continue their conversation. Uh, talking about soccer. You know, I... I love... Jobs. I love having jobs. Love getting new jobs. I'm wondering if this manufacturing plant is hiring. You guys look like you work at the manufacturing plant. 
Look at these hands, and I like flash them just real quick. Calloused all over. <laughs> they haven't really been paying attention to you, but you're getting louder, and uh, <laughs> obviously you've got their attention. And they turn to look, and they're like startled by your appearance. Like, oh, ah, uh, uh, sorry. What, what? What is it you're saying? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I was just wondering if you guys work uh, down the street there at the at Henson. Uh, just rolled into town, kind of a journeyman. I go from town to town, picking up odd jobs. Not a drifter, more like a classy hobo. And I'm wondering if there's a way, if you guys know if they're hiring, or just give me some intel on this place. Like, is it worth getting a job there? You guys happy? Tell me everything. He sit, I sit out. He, uh, he looks across at the other guy, and they kind of smile at each other. He's like, no, no, that... We're not hiring over at, at Henson, uh, but there's plenty of other places here in Derby, I'm sure. Do you have a, a resume? Resumes exist in 1920? And do manufacturing did. plants give a fuck about them? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's uh, not, not, not at Henson. Nothing uh, nothing available there. But uh, Oh, but, how do you... Uh, how do you just, are you a supervisor? How do you know that? That's crazy. Oh, uh, I'm not a supervisor. I just uh, know that uh, the, the, the team we have is the, is the team we have. Sort of all sit there. I'm a, I'm a mold maker. Um, oh. And then the guy puts his hand on his buddy. He's like, like almost like to quiet him down. He's like, well, where are you from again? What'd you say? Well, I'm what you would call a Yankee. Uh, again, just sort of, I like traveling around. You ever read books about um, like cowboys? You know, like the American legend of a cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, they trot no. around from town to town, and they go, and they, like, deal with problems. And they spit all over their microphones. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's sort of what I do. And I just wanted to get a feel for, I don't know, I guess manufacturing. I was always good in shop class in high school. So I just felt like just going to waste here. Yeah, yeah well, uh, sorry, we can't help you. It's, uh, it's above our pay grade, but um, as, far as, as far as we know, Henson's all set. So what are you guys nice, making nice over one. there? You're, what, are you, what are you making molds for? And I'll do some sort of charm here, Troy. Okay, I'll be yeah, like, give me a charm. You guys look so strapping. I mean, whatever you're making <laughs> must be big and structurally sound. <laughs> you're doing great. Do you know, just, I yeah. know he's a man talking to a man, but I forgot that he was a trophy husband at one point. And <laughs> that's true, he was uh, I got a hard success. Hard oh. success. And, uh, okay. Uh, the guy's like, he, he looks around uh, to the left and the right. The, the the first guy that you were talking to, not the second guy. He's like, it's, uh, it's government stuff. It's top secret. Nothing we can really talk about. Whoa. That's, wow. It's impressive. You guys must be, are you guys like secret agents? That's crazy. Yeah. No, I just, the, the best man for the job. But, uh, we're not, we're, can't say too much. But, uh. Anyway, good luck. Good luck. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Work. Thank you. You're both yeah. uh, uh, very handsome. Nice oh. to stand up. <laughs> very kind of you to say. Uh, you're something too. <laughs> uh, Carter returns all puffed up, mm -hmm. pleased with himself. I got some well. valuable stuff, guys. Oh, they, how'd it go? Well, they don't really tell me. They don't really tell me anything. But <laughs> the important thing is not that and how much I succeeded or didn't succeed. But rather, they claim they're making government stuff. And one guy was like, "We're making. A, I make a mold. And the other guy was like, don't tell him. And then I was able to put on the old Tillinghast charm. And then, Des, you'll learn about that as we go. And he told me that, they, uh, that they're making stuff for the government. Top secret. That is and, fascinating. And some manufacturing, the, the fellas say that they're working on a government contract. Yeah. So I've done my job, but I just take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose this means we must, at some point, break into this place to find out what's going on. All arrows certainly point to, nobody's going to tell us. All right. avenues point to break in. Always. Again, as the trusted thief here, uh, it's always good to break into a place once you've... It's even easier to break into a place once you've already been inside it once before which we will be tomorrow morning. And we'll see every little weakness, every little thing. And if we feel the need to then break in, I feel like that's our best shot. Okay. I guess yeah. what else can we find out while, while we're still here? I'd like to learn exactly why it is that they're 
under such armed supervision. Why the why it seems that the the guards at their manufacturing floor outnumber the workers two to one. Um, and yeah, I'll maybe do the same sort of thing. Just bring some drinks over to a table and not not over the course of one conversation, but in the way that a journalist might just like try to sit with somebody for an hour or more and just like slowly and obliquely go from like you see the match yesterday um yada yada um, crazy about lesser edel that they say that the young the youngest of the veins was taken by this monster but i don't so much believe in that sort of thing and yada 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 out and cut to them finally being like um, when i worked in a um as a boy in a belfast shipyard now that was tough work that was and a foreman um would knock you about soon as look at you um what's management like over at henson all right, give me a. Uh, this feels like fast talk to me, but if you could okay. do charm as well, uh, right. whatever is the better for you. Because uh, fast talk. I, I imagine yeah. this is happening, like you said, it's happening over a period of time. You come over with the drinks. Hey, bartender, actually, give me a couple extra drinks. You, I got a nine under 45. That's what we call an extreme success. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. We just yeah, had you guys like- in your roles. We just had Carter go up and do his thing, and we're like, you learn from us, learn from us. And then this. New guy. <laughs> We're watching him from afar just like completely swindle. Yeah, clearly he learned. <laughs> <laughs> learned it all from you. Prove me wrong. I'd say that, uh, you know, as the conversation starts, they're similar to the conversation with Carter. They're very, very wary, very, very uh, um, just sort of nervous. Uh, not, not nervous so much as just tight lipped about what it is they do. They deflect, they deflect, they deflect. Ah, manufacturing, ah, this, uh, you know, but. You start. Uh, did you use fast talk or charm? Fast talk. You did fast talk. So you're you're kind of bipping and bopping with them, taking them left and right. After a while, uh, guys like listen, we're really it's, it's just top secret stuff that we do over there. I, I really I get in a lot of trouble uh, if I talk about it. It's a good job they took they took good care of us over there at Henson. Uh, this is this is stuff that's this has been commissioned by the War Office. Really, yeah, it's a big deal. Know? Like up in Belfast, like. We'd maybe make like a warship, like a gunship, like. Is this the sort of thing that you're making, like a, like a tank or a? I gotta be honest. I don't even know what it is we're making. And the other guy's like, "Come on, man! You're not supposed to be talking about that." He's like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's it's some wild stuff. Some really wild stuff. We're just kind of. We just do. We just we just make what they they tell us to make and. So uh, each person focused on their own portion of the task. No one person having a, a view of the big picture. Well, Mr. Marshall is, is, is our foreman, and he uh, and that's the guy that you're meeting with tomorrow. Mm. He's, uh, he just gives us the, the blueprints, and we just do our best to make heads or tails of it. Um, you know, the engineers know a little bit more than I do, uh, but uh, it's... It's wild stuff, stuff you've never seen before. I'm not quite sure what it does, but uh, they pay us well. They also, I'll be honest, they pay us to keep our mouths shut. I've already said too much. Oh, well. well, it's good to see that um, labor's been adequately compensated. So the, so the guards there aren't so much for tamping down whatever unrest might be at Henson, since it seems you're well remunerated. But to keep prying eyes from looking at exactly what you're making, considering it's in the national interest. It's government, it's government work. Right, right, those, right. Those guys are great. They're, they're wonderful. They treat us uh, great. Sometimes they even come out with drinks. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are here right now. Uh, usually they're around. But, uh, yeah, no, they're great guys. They're great. Mr. Marshall's great, too. They, they all take, take good care of us. Well, to Mr. Marshall, then, and the good people at Henson, and... And the good people of this fine country for whom you're working in the great national interest of the war effort. Hopefully it should, should never come to the... Right, 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 right. right. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, Duns the mouse. Reverb no all in this and all. Yeah. See, it was nice meeting you. Anyway, it was, yeah, I'm going to go talk to my friends. Right, right, right. Right, oh. Um, all right. Um, and then I'll <laughs> scuttle back to the crew. And, um, you guys in your extreme and hard successes. It's all right, kid. If it was a bust, don't worry about it. Looked like <laughs> things weren't going well. <laughs> Did you learn anything else? Well, Miss Chabron, just adding more shades of color to the uh, picture that Mister Tellenhast so um, adequately brought to you. 
that yeah, they claim they're working for the war office. Some sort of weaponry. They're all um, working on an assembly sort of capacity, so no one person knows exactly what they're all, all making. The labour is so divided that no one can get a great picture of what it is that they're actually fabricating. But Mr. Marshall, who we're to see yesterday, uh, tomorrow, he's the one that would have a full picture of what it is they're actually manufacturing. Interesting. Strange that Gavigan would be so mixed up in something like this. That's what I was thinking. And another thing that I, that I just came to mind is, do you think it would be wise for us to, in, in our casual conversations, to, to say, you know, to give our cover story so that I'm sure if somebody sees us, tomorrow that it would make sense for us to be there and not cause any sort of suspicion that I suppose we could plant that seed as needed I may have told at least two men that I was uh, in the market for a job (laughs) (laughs) well I mean let's just hope they don't see me come in as a safe inspector You, you could be doing both things fake mustache yeah, the safe. Yeah, exactly. That's my twin. Hello. <laughs> With the same facial injury. We should just just change your mask up. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. You're the worst person to like have two covers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, draw oh, that with was a another smiley face, face <laughs> on your mask. Yes. <laughs> this is my happier brother. Yes. <laughs> um. Well, now here's my only thing, guys. Actually, maybe we should get out of here. I feel like we gotta we gotta download. That's not a term that exists. Let's, we gotta let Dez know exactly what's going on, I feel like, and really catch him up to speed, maybe through like a time-saving montage or something. I think that's a <laughs> wonderful idea, and I, and I do think as the more time we spend here, the more suspicious it, the more attention we draw to ourselves. I don't yeah. think it would be helpful. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Is there, I guess we're gonna have to find out God, you know what really bothers me about this whole Vaughn being gone thing is his wallet is gone. He would always get stay? our hotels for us too. He would always <laughs> get it to set up, and I didn't even have to think about it. I just yeah. Plus, I, I had to just that's... pay for that drink. That sucked. Along for the ride, and now I have to plan <laughs> where I'm staying. And while we're at it, if I could be perfectly candid, I thought I was marrying into much more money. If she's turning into an Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> Carter looks at Feyruz is like, damn. I didn't know uh, that ran through your mind. Mad respect. Of course it That's did. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carter, do you still have money? Like, does any does anyone have money? Um, I haven't even looked in my wallet. Well, we for have. So long. We do have each the of line your credit of credit ratings. To, yeah. Well, we've got whatever kind of hookups through um, homeboys back in New York. Yeah, so. you could yes. call. Desmond actually has the best credit rating with a credit rating of 25, followed by, oh. followed by Margo at 20. <laughs> what? I'm somewhat at her just expenses, you know, I, I get to, I, I turn in my receipts at the end of a, at the end of a working week. Back to, I mean, I, I, I write off all of my art Mickey. supplies, but I can't believe that makes me second. <laughs> it's like losing a cleric. I we can heal the party. <laughs> I can be very honest. I, as an academic, I've never actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is interesting. Now, it's 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 pot. You know, we'll deal with London. You know, did you leave that? Did you check out of that hotel? You're gonna check back in. We'll we'll deal with that later. Um, <laughs> Just but- keep running Vaughn's credit up. <laughs> the- did you take? <laughs> He's cred- drooling in a bed somewhere. He has no idea that we're completely. Oh, <laughs> Flashback to you kissing him on the forehead. You just reached into his wallet. <laughs> a lot of you brought me to have this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you said, you do have the ability to call up uh, is it Kensington or um, what's his name back in New York to fund whatever you need. So, and that's not anything we have to role play, but it would mean there's it takes time to get that money. I don't think that you're all cash poor right now, though. I don't mind Always, sleeping, baby. Rough, sleeping rough if we're... Um, surely there's a, a hostel or some place where we can just get a room or two. A hostel? On a the hostel? God. Okay, new plan. If this is what we're going to do, I'm going to get a blackout drunk. And that <laughs> way you lot, matter. <laughs> I thought you lot were world travelers. Didn't you go... Weren't you camping rough in Peru? That's what I read in a man's journals. Uh, uh, we were, but that was also fairly well funded. Uh, yes. Our uh, benefactor, R.I.P. 
Uh, we might have. Well, again, we'll fill you in on everything. He's also, no longer since alive. That was also the very beginning of, of this whole ordeal. So I think to us all uh, at that point, we were roughing it, as it were. Not like. Yeah. After the things we've seen. All right. Um, so there's the old Bell Hotel, which was recommended to okay. you. Uh, can't afford that. Uh, there's, oh, the, fuck. there's the Georgian Hotel, also very nice. Uh, a little bit quieter and a quieter section of town. Might be too fancy. And then uh, there's the Cashmere Hotel. Which that sounds. That seems off the table immediately. Sounds plush. <laughs> yeah, it's actually. It shouldn't be called that. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hourly it's rates. It's one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's got I hourly see. rates. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, sort of uh, packed next to uh, some seedy bars, um, and uh, yeah, it's not 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 what you what you become accustomed to. But it makes the most sense. Uh, well, if there's like a yeah, if, I'd say like maybe if we stop by either like a, a less populated bar, or if this rat hole has its own hotel bar. Actually, we just all get in the same room and just get some privacy and talk to Tess. I think I think it's I important. Think so. that he knows yeah. what we know about Gavigan. Let's get a, get a room at the Cashmere then. <laughs> room at the Cashmere. Oh. Hello, governors. Oh, my God. Looking for a room tonight. We <laughs> have vacancy. Don't ask what's in the meat pies. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, may I say I love how your makeup looks like literal clown paint. <laughs> oh, thank you. The cheeks are this color of strawberries. Um, my mother taught me how to do my makeup. Cashmere. Have you ever been to Cashmere? No. Mm. Me neither. Anyway, we how would like... How many rooms would you like? Um... How many are available? Oh, let me check the ledger. <laughs> All of them. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Every room is available. <laughs> no one ever stays here. <laughs> Great. I... I don't... I can't, can't imagine why that is. A, uh, um, well, a young young I lady guess, and a young man um, walk in, sort of necking, and uh, wave to the woman. She says, oh, hello! And they go off to a room. We are going to sleep on these beds? Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. In our clothes. Uh. <laughs> yes. I can okay. find you a nice suite that can fit all four of you. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Here you are. Room 316. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Uh, may your fake beauty mark only get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you charmer. <laughs> How body. Okay, let's go to this suite. Uh, yeah. Just open it up. Look around. This <laughs> <laughs> flies buzzing. No, you're, you're, you're in the room. Uh, what's what sort of the plan? You want to get to like get to know Desmond a little bit more here, and then make a plan for the morrow. Mm. You have a meeting at I think it was 10 a.m. Uh, with Frank Marshall, mm-hmm. the uh, supervisor or foreman or whatever. Yeah, this yeah. Place. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Des. Before we go further, again, we've alluded to this a little bit. I hope you're sitting down, even though I can see you. Please sit down. Um, we, I, I uh, sit down in a chair that like uh, creaks under my weight. <laughs> <plate. laughs> um, so as you know, we are the mystery squad and I'm not quite sure what you've uh, gathered from your intel on us, but we've, uh, come across, uh, many a danger in our time together. Some of it pretty hard to explain. Uh, how open is your mind to, um, extra natural things? I suppose how, I'll ask how open your mind is, Master Telling asked. I've begun to formulate a theory about what oh. is precisely going on in connecting various threads that I've been pulling at that it seems that you lot, the Mystery Squad, have been, f- been prying into. Oh, Gavigan, oh, strange, yeah. these strange organizations, murders, the veins, this Velier's fellow's crack up, whatever was going on in, in New York, but it seems as though you're you're still dealing with people shipping things around, as I've overheard. And of course, what what I saw in the journals of Mr. Villiers. I think what's going on is becoming all too clear. There is a vast overarching conspiracy mm-hmm. seeking to oppress the entire world. Yeah. An order is rising up to uh-huh. to do combat with them. 
and Mr. Villiers and his... and his delusion is only able to see this in spiritual terms because he has not been awakened to see them in materialist terms. He is blinded by the only force that is truly colouring his vision, that of his class. An order is rising up. A crimson spectre is haunting Europe. And Gavigan, the owners, the bosses, the veins, the aristos, are those that are tamping down with a lid in hand, crushing the workers who are on the verge of rising up. But this entire system is about to go topsy-turvy. The people are awakening. And before long, the end of the world is coming. The end of the world that they know. And a worker's utopia is going to rise to take its place. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like you have got one foot in, one foot out of the door. Well, most of what you said is true, except add uh, zombies, <clears throat> dragons, uh, mummies, what else? Like Fat when, vampires. When you said, the, the world people. Was, like when you said the world was ending, just stop there. Yeah, I felt like you were projecting a little bit after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, everything you're saying, yeah, sure, proletariat, rah, rah, rah. But we need to also deal with the fact that there is literal evil out there, uh, and that it takes the shape of things that will render your mind asunder. Um, I, quite, I quite agree with you, Mr. Tillinghast, that there is evil out there, that we are duty-bound as, as members of a particular class. Uh, you and I, Massar, you're a photographer, ain't you? Mm-hmm. You're an artist. I'm a journalist. Yes. We we are at the intellectual vanguard of the revolution. It's our it's our duty to show the way in which these classes are being exploited by people like the Gavigans and the Veins, and and blaming them on a material beasties and things that go bump in the night. I don't think I can show the public some of the pictures that I have. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Margot, do you have some pictures we could maybe show our new friend here? I, I don't maybe know. It's worth, maybe it's just wait, worth waiting until maybe, the moment arises. Maybe and then you'll sort of yeah, understand, I guess. Maybe it's for the best that he not look at some of the things that we've seen. But Sweet summer child. Desmond, uh, this is... Uh, uh, goes far beyond any sort of class warfare, although I, 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 I'm I not downplaying the importance of, of all of these systems that are coming into play right now, but the things that we've seen are, are very supernatural. They, they don't, there, there is no, anyone who had seen the things that we've seen would, would be locked away. Some of them have been. <laughs> Some of them ha- have been, yes. But we can table the discussion of uh, supernatural entities for now. Here's what we can tell you about Gavigan. Uh, it sounds like you know a lot about him. Uh, we uh, took the liberty of uh, entering his uh, premises uh, sort of illegally uh, a couple days or what is time? I don't know. Days ago. <laughs> Multiple days ago. And... We discovered uh, in his basement um, a hidden room uh, through which we entered. Uh, we entered through a sarcophagus down a flight of stairs, and we saw all this crazy um, shit. Sorry, back up. Through a what? A sarcophagus. You know where mummies usually There chill? was a sarcophagus with like a secret way to open it. I pressed but, the eyes, and it was this contraption that whirred, and there yeah. were stairs that went into the bait. It was very, very cool. Again, Margot needed my encouragement to do so, but once I kind of lifted her up, that is pushed, that true. pushed the button, she did, down we went. Um, <laughs> so you're right about the shipping. They're definitely shipping lots of crazy artifacts all over the place. Um, and what concerns me is that this man also has interests in this fa- factory that's, regardless of whether or not this is, act, I mean, this could not be a government contract. What if this is just a line that they're feeding people to make some crazy thing that's going to, again, here's where we're gonna have to meet in the middle, Des, they could be making some sort of infernal doomsday machine um, that could 
you know, for the purposes of whatever cult they're a part of. Uh, so that sort of leads us to, well, we need to talk about our plan for tomorrow because if we're going in a safe <laughs> inspectors, um, there could be something I mean, much bigger going on and we could get in some real trouble. I mean, it, it could be that they're not manufacturing anything at all, but it's a hub for these cursed objects to be to be funneled through and, and distributed to these yeah. locations. We also know that there's a, a, a club down in London called the Sapphire. What was it called? What's the club? The Clare? Uh, the, the, the Pyramid? Blue oh, yeah, Pyramid Club. Oh, Blue pyramid, pyramid Club. Uh, they, uh, we met somebody there who claimed that, um, people were being taken against their will in a truck, uh, off premises to die. Every full moon, as it were. Yeah, which is coming up on Tuesday. So that's a deadline. Put that in your calendar. And you think we, that's connected to, to Garvigan and the lot at the Penhue Foundation? We don't know for sure, but something's up. We do so, suspect. To clarify, just because there's a lot of information, is when that woman spoke to Vaughn and Feyre, she said her boyfriend was killed. Um, the people that are picked up in this truck, it's unclear if they're being killed or not, or if they're w- uh, willingly getting on this truck. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, either way, that seems like those. trafficking of trafficking of persons. Yes. It's absolutely, yes. Now, Very. whether or not Gavigan's involved in that side of things, we... We don't know. I can't honestly remember why we ended up at the Pyramid Club. Well, if he's if he's keeping strange sarcophagus passageways, who knows what he might be capable of. Class ideology is a kind of prison that refracts uh-huh. reality, breaks it into only the light that your that your class will let in. And people are so willing to believe that they their point at the to use a belabored image at the peak of the pyramid is that they do not realize that the pyramid should be inverted that those Sorry, who make have things you, have hmm? you seen a pyramid in your have you seen a pyramid before in your in your dreams she like wasn't listening to your class warfare thing but then she started hearing you talk about the pyramids and she's like what i dreamt of it it's funny you mention that massar when i was back at um the uh EGB and B. <laughs> I um in the library after after reading about the pyramid that um you lot apparently explored in the crabbed and uh, close penmanship of Mr. Villiers. I did dream of a pyramid. I scarcely don't think how I how I could not have having having read what he wrote down. What was happening as the pyramid that you were dreaming of? Can I roll something to see what I what I dreamt of, and how th- how? I want to see if we had similar dreams. How vivid the Without imagery like, was. Did you see a blood orgy at the pyramid? <laughs> uh, yeah. Give me a oh, yeah. How do you do you roll to remember your dreams? Um, or like or how how vivid it was, uh, or how it, the, um. Yeah, what was I? What was I really being communed with by these images? Uh, like power, okay. maybe? Uh, yeah, or, uh, I'll say like we 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 as you as she asked you that like what did you dream? We 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 just see you go back and like maybe you're in that room, yeah. the same room that Vaughn is laying in now, and just kind of like having fits and starts in your sleep, a cold sweat, and um. You, you see like um, endless desert and you feel like you're standing there in the desert and it's hot and you feel, uh, you can feel the cold sweat that you're feeling in the bedroom in the dream it should be a, a, a warm sweat, but it's a cold sweat. You're mixing the reality and the dream world and you're just kind of like lost in this desert and you're just wearing like scraps of clothing but yeah you're still uh, oppressively hot and the sun is nowhere to be seen but you can't when you look up in the sky you can't tell if it's being blotted out by something or if it's just nighttime it's a very unnatural lighting situation but yet you still feel this heat and you're looking for the source of this heat and then all of a sudden on the horizon is this enormous pyramid 
and you realize in that moment that this pyramid climbs so high that it blots out the sun. And so it must be daytime, but the pyramid is blotting out the sun so you don't feel the heat. And you start to walk towards it, or maybe you're being pulled towards it, but the closer you get, this structure that looks like a triangle is not a triangle. It is actually some sort of being. And the being has long legs that sort of uh, make the bod like the the uh, the sides of the triangle of the pyramid, but then it extends up into this body where the head should be instead of a head is just a long tentacle, almost like a tongue. And we'll be back right after this break. I've dreamed of a pyramid. Well, I've dreamed of one. now know that Desmond was moved from the library as he was hearing voices. Perhaps those voices began shortly after this dream of a pyramid blotting out the sun that as you were pulled closer, drawn closer towards it, was not a pyramid at all, but some kaiju-like creature whose head had been completely transformed or it didn't really exist. It was just this large tentacle-like tongue. Yes, I am. That's right, I, I, I dreamt of a pyramid. And there. What? It is time to invert the pyramid that has been laid atop us to to crush us and I see all these the strange images that you bring up amongst each other that Villiers put down in his journal the living death of a of a walking corpse this is indeed the life of the working man in today's society to be innervated of your life force, of your fat and essence, while your fat and nourishment is rendered unto those that would seek to exploit you. As an artist, I hmm? hear your connections. I hear what you're connecting. My brain, it does that too. We actually saw blood-sucking zombie fats eating Beast. It's none not. Of, it's this. not a flowery language. It's not. A none of this is figurative. We've we've seen this. Yeah, the beast of Lesser was. Edale was a a beast, a, a creature that nearly killed us. Look at see this, and I like hold up the the wound, lift up my shirt so you could see the gouge <sighs> from the ghoul. That's just a just a ghoul did that. That's real. It's real. Uh. But again, we don't have to go in circles about it. If you don't believe us, that's cool. There just might come a time where you're gonna, and uh, I mean, we'll be there for you. Yes, I, I'm sure that <laughs> we will come across something else sometime soon. But if, if not, uh, Margot, do you have that mask with you? 
we don't need to get into that. That we seems don't need like a- to, I, I, I know. I, I'm just saying it as there is, if I you have it needed proof, I put he'll get it. He's gonna get it. But but I, I yes, I, I I can I can assure you that in no time you will experience these things. But the, the mask is gone. I oh. put it on and then it disappeared. It's gone. Is it? I put it on before I met up with you guys again. Um, before we came on to the boat to come here. And I saw lots of premonition things that we ended up experiencing at the artist studio, among other visions. And then it, the, the, ma- the mask melted in, into my face at, when I was seeing my visions. And then it never came back. What? Huh. You I can't that remember you if we knew things. that already. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Margot remembers? Yeah, she put on the mask and then it disappeared. And was I this, don't have a notes that say that it came back. Was this post Gunter showing up or before? Like when you were still before. in the hospital? Before. Okay. When you were still in well, the hospital. Yeah, like, um, I think this was like, this is in the first episode that we recorded where I noted I put on the mask during my like downtime where like we mm-hmm. weren't on the yeah, show. Yeah, I remember you put it back on. I just don't remember what happened. And you told me the vision that I saw. But before that, you're like, I put on the ma- I, I put on the mask and it's gone. And then it never came back. So I was like, oh, did it like, maybe I still have it. I think you still have it. I think it was the vision that like what you saw was gone. It may have been just a... I worded well, okay. it poorly, You're but right. yeah, you still have the mask. Every time we think we don't have, have the mask, mask, it's like, no, you do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Retcon, but like, you it's mask. very, you You were not in your, your, uh, you know, the best frame of mind at the time when you put that on. And every time you wear that, it wears away your sanity a little bit more. So it makes sense that you weren't a hundred percent sure. I, 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 I do have the mask. Um, <laughs> But even just gazing at it and not even putting it on and looking inside of it uh, brings visions. And you can yeah. tell Desmond is looking around at you like, are you people okay? Can we just start <laughs> forgetting that you're there? It's just like, um, cause I remember you put it on, I think you put it on after we, after the space, the hole in space and time opened up and we killed that lizard monkey. Uh, but I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> watching. <laughs> Well, uh, I'd love to sit here reminiscing with you about what you've been through all day, and I'd love to learn more. That your your stories would would fit right into the pages of the scoop. But, unbeknownst to my uncle, I used the press of the scoop to publish another paper, the People's International. Oh, and these, like a zine. <laughs> I, su- I suppose you might call, call it that. <laughs> a small publication, but but, he's, but gets out the real news to the people who need to be awakened. Oh, okay. okay. All right. That's well, good to I, know. We're all learning a little bit about each other. <laughs> I don't know if we will give you the answers that you want, but you will get answers. Well, we're yes, going to fight existential yes. dreads and horrors in our own different ways. Even though I, I think you've not awoken to exactly what is going on in this world, in time we will all awaken. Isn't it funny how, I just turned to the girls, like, isn't it funny how both he and Vaughn just go on these, like, tangents about just this bullshit? It's pretty They're crazy. So like similar <laughs> and so different. It's great. I mean, I, I love it. it. It kind of like makes me feel like he's not all the way gone. Hmm. <laughs> um, well, okay. Well, so regardless, what are we what are we doing tomorrow? Are we tomorrow, still, we're, all right. We're going so, in as inspectors to this um to the uh, to the safe, but we'd also like to see exactly what it is that they're making. And it sounds like we're having an appointment. Going? We have an appointment directly with Mr. Marshall. That's just right. you two, though, right? Was it just you two? It was. You guys were hiding semi successfully in a building. <laughs> so I wonder what we're going to do. Um, maybe you can bring us in as um, 
exchange students. Interns? <laughs> Interns. <laughs> Interns. <laughs> exchange students. Sure. That um, worked once. Bring your wife to work day. Uh-huh, uh, I'm sure. Any of that, I think, is believable. Uh, yeah, I think... Here, here's my, my bigger fear is after what we've learned is that it, it, we're not in the... It's not going to be as safe, no pun intended, as uh, I thought it was going to be. I thought we were just going to be going in, meeting with this clueless guy who owns this manufacturing plant. If there's... Regardless of whether or not they're working for the government, it just feels like there's more afoot here than even we thought before. Right. During working hours, it seems as though they've, they're operating with great security and and separation. Yeah, so maybe that'll be okay. Like, maybe during working hours, we'll be all right. If uh, you come in with us as our, um, either as our interns, assistants, I don't wish to say wives, but... um, it, 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 We've done it, don't worry. It has been floated. If, if Tilling Ast and I are given a tour of the of the safe to give it a once over um, if you are left alone at any time well perhaps you could rifle the the desk and personal effects of Mr. Marshall and we could get a better picture of precisely what's going on at Henson Manufacturing I mean if we could find schematics for whatever they're making blueprints whatever all these pieces connect into that would be pretty I, big. I mean, that would be wonderful if we can, and I and I do agree with you that we should, uh, if given the opportunity. However, it, there are plenty of other we could we could see um, faulty areas of their security. We could see if there are any uh, places that look suspicious. Maybe have hidden locations within the plant itself. Yeah. We can keep an eye out for any of these things. I think seven eyes are better than three in there. Well, that's so. an interesting idea as well, Monsieur Braun. If we go in, but not everyone comes out. And one person could be an inside an inside man, let the others in, or... Oh. Because it seems that if, if what he says is true, and there's only two night watchmen, and I, I like that a damn sight better than the legions of security that were coming out of there when the final whistle blew. I just think it just might be peculiar if four of us walk in and they see three of us walk out. Uh, this is true. We'll have the option. We'll think on our feet. That's what we do. We do like to play it by ear, as they say. <laughs> I'll tell you this, though. Before we go there at 10, I'm swinging by some sort of Army-Navy store or a gardening center. I'm getting some fucking knives. I can't... You <laughs> do need to upgrade your... I gotta get strapped. Artillery, you have no perhaps. weapons. I have nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's crazy. We Peru, should have I had all these machetes. It was, I was uh, up to my ears in machetes. He, now, nothing. We should have done that when Tilling, uh, when, when, when Vaughn was still with us, because unless you plan on pocketing some of these things without any intention of paying for them, oh. it's going to be a challenge. Desmond, what are you packing? Yeah, what do you got for weaponry? <laughs> what have I and got I don't want to hear the pens mightier than the sword or any of that shit. <laughs> well, there, there was that. But then there's also St. Francis and St. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brawler, got it. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll get you a little switchblade or something. But uh, maybe a, one of the combs that looks like a knife. <laughs> Maybe I'll go down to the front desk and see if we can call our contact in New York to get some um, money wired over. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Have it sent I got, I, straight I to the that. Waldorf in London. Oh, hello, did you want to use my phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you call and you get through and he's going to wire money to the Waldorf. That's so far away. I know, but this is... Just You've Not, got enough to get you through this. this okay, all right. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't want to stay at the Waldorf, you could you could have said something else, but uh, just so we don't have to talk to that woman. Uh, we'll call them <laughs> set it all up. <laughs> uh, that was all smart. Right. So next morning, you want to uh, stop at an Army-Navy store, get a couple blades, no big deal. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You got enough money to get some blades. Uh, Slip one over to your new buddy, Desmond. And then you're going to head to your 10 a.m. appointment. Now, are you taking uh, the ladies as well? Or what's the plan? I think so. I mean, I think so. I think getting them in. I think having multiple eyes on this situation. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you show up outside Henson Manufacturing. You you leave the Cashmere Hotel uh, en masse, and you show up there, and it's a different uh, guard at the gate, and he sees uh, the four of you coming. He's like, oh, it's still right there. Um, can I help you? That's why you had an appointment for uh, the morning, Mr. Bryson. Bryson, he takes a, leans over, grabs a clipboard. Bryson, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, just two of you. Uh, that's me and my associate here. But um, we, we have these uh, traveling companions as well. Can they not come in with us? I think you need to specify by traveling companions mm. what that means, sir. <clears throat> uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, not just them people we picked up along the way, but they are our, and we never really settled on what it is. I think um, at the same time we say, secretary wives. <laughs> Uh, can I get your names? Looks at you, Pharaohs. Um, my name is Penelope. Penelope, last name? Last name is Peters. Cruz. Penelope Peters. (laughs) (laughs) Penelope Peters, that's a, that's a real name if ever I heard one. And, uh, and you, miss? My name is Mary Max Smith. Mary. <laughs> Mary Masterson, would you say? Uh, Mary Smith. I Mary hope you're making that face. I hope she's making that face. Like she Mary doesn't know. Is there any... You sound like a Smith. Mary mm. Smith. All right. And you're all with the uh, safe company. That's correct. Yes. Uh, I, and I think we did it. Ross, did it? You and I also give bullshit names. We did indeed. Yeah, One of which Bryson. was Bryson. And, um, I can't oh, remember what yours was, Rob. It was uh, <laughs> Steven something. Something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so he has your two names and he's got Steven the... Steven Peters. It was Steven Peters. I noted Steven it down. Peters. Oh, and Pen- Peter. oh. So, yeah, Peters. So we are his secretary wives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so amazing. Steve, uh, you always want to <laughs> bring your spouse to a business meeting. Uh, it's just great oh. because because it just means that when five o'clock happens, the work doesn't necessarily stop. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like we could be brushing our teeth next to each other and turn to each other, and be like, "Oh, don't forget, we've got the appointment tomorrow too." And that just keeps us sharper. Do you know what I mean, sir? He's Mystery terrible squad. with money. I do the accounting. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bad. With squad. Everything. Uh, all right. Well, he uh, he lets you through, and he's like, uh, "All right, the main building's right over there. Mr. Marshall will be out uh, in just a moment." And uh, he kind of ushers you past this little, you know, smaller gate into the area, but he stays really close to you. Mm. Once you're past the gate and you have a chance to, like, uh, take it in a little bit, you see that there are two large structures sort of dominating the yard. There's a a workshop um, that's close to where you entered, and then in the distance there's a big shed and beyond those is a smaller shed and the toilet block. And this is what the the lady saw when they were up in that abandoned building sort of looking over, and now you see that. Um, It seems like the two large buildings, uh, or or like the the one, sorry, uh, two large workshop. Oh yeah, so the workshop seems very busy, like there's people in that, and then the shed, uh, the large shed seems occupied as well, whereas the two other buildings, it's it's unclear. Uh, As the guard brings you in, uh, the doors of the workshop uh, bust open, and uh, two guards come out, two more of these guys dressed like the the watchman, or the the, the door guard, and uh, splitting the two of them is another guy, tall, very muscular, young, like maybe mid-30s. He's got messy hair, and he's got this huge scar uh, along his left cheek. Hmm. Uh, And he's like, oh, I'll take it from here, I'll take it from here. Um, So uh, you're with the uh, safe company, eh? And the two guards just sort of like stand back and they shut the doors to the warehouse after he comes out. You're with the uh, safe company? Yeah, that's right. Uh, That would be us. St- uh, Stinson something safe. Stin- Stinson Manufacturing. Yeah, Stinson some, Manufacturing. Yeah, you know my my routine. man. Yes, 
inspect routine inspection of our product yeah, right that there might was... be a design flaw affecting its uh capacity to keep what's inside safe as it were yeah well that's my, my man told me yesterday but uh, uh he uh, he overspoke there's, there's nothing wrong with the safe don't need any inspection uh and uh frankly shouldn't have been even granted this appointment uh, good for you for charming your way in here but i can assure you uh, the safe is in uh, it's in great shape there are only two keys and i hold one of them i checked it this myself this morning it's the only way uh, to get in or out of that safe it's perfectly fine, though I appreciate your steadfastness. Uh, I, sorry, well, just a quick question. Therein the flaw. Yeah, do as, you? I'm sorry. As, do you work at a, a safe manufacturing company? <clears throat> you work here, know. right? You work at this manufacturing company. I do, yes. And so are you, here. I'm just curious, are you an expert in safes, too? Because uh, I can tell you, sir. Yes. Three, four years into some of our safes, we found out that a certain alloy can um, degrade over time. Various pinions, joints, that kind of a thing. It might open and close just fine. It might lock just fine. But the potential of this door just coming right off its hinges. We don't. You don't even have to let us in if you don't want to. We don't have to go and see what's in your safe. That's your private business. That is a contract that's sacred between Stanson Safe Company and and our clients. It's just about getting a sense of the outside of it. We just want to check the hinges and we'll be out of your hair along with our secretary wives. That's pretty good, Rob. Uh, yeah, I know. What, uh, <laughs> what should I roll? I know you don't want to roll it, but it's fast talk. Yeah, fuck, uh, it's not. It's <laughs> persuade. You were, you I mean, were fast it's persuade. Persuade, then, yeah, yeah, give me persuade. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I really picked it's the wrong It's not charm, though. though. It's not like, I know, I know. tell I you about this safe, handsome. Yeah, I'm glad I'm a con man <laughs> that I didn't put anything into fast talk. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 45 under 65. 45 under 65 to persuade. Keep in mind, every time you succeed at these checks, <laughs> we always forget to talk about it, check those things. Um, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, Michael behind the scenes is pretty good about uh, staying on it, but oh, you yeah. guys make a lot of checks and during a development phase, uh, you'll be able to increase some of these. Uh, it's like, I mean, I, I checked it myself this morning and uh, I just don't see any problem. Um, and again, it could look that way to an untrained eye, but we're the experts. No. You need all four of you in there to take a look at this. I mean, if there's a place you'd rather our uh, secretary wives sit uh, to, you know, stay out of the way, I don't know if they'll rile up the gents inside or not, just with their very presence. As you could tell, they're both uh, uh, incredibly attractive. You can have them go wherever, uh, you know. Does it bother I mean, you that we all go? I just don't see the point of it. I don't think we need four of you in there to check a safe that... I already know to be in perfect working order. Well, do you I have, a, do you have about... like a waiting area or like a place where they can, a lounge? They yeah, can right here out? is the waiting area. Sorry, I, right. just, I, I can't be letting just anybody in here, but uh, uh, if, if, if one of you, I suppose one of you could come in and take a look real quick. Um, just give me a moment. And uh, he goes over to the two guards that are standing near the warehouse and he uh, whispers something to them. That doesn't seem great. And then he waves. He goes in, shuts the door. And like 15 minutes pass. And he comes back out. Sorry, sorry for the delay here. I well, wasn't expecting uh, having anyone inside, but uh, you, come on in and uh, let's make it quick. I tell you, I got to get one of those for my face. Oh, it's they like do wonders. Yeah, it's a dental dam. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That it's, uh, right. yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't sound I just recently had fillers put in just one side of my face. Killer. Um, it's got, it's got, but I'm sorry, sir. It's just, I need my associate here at least. He, I need his keen Irish eyes as well. All right. Well, just make it quick. All right. I, I, we've got, uh, we're, we're, we've got a lot of time constraints here and I, I've, I had to clear out the warehouse. So we understand how you cleared out the whole warehouse. Okay. Well, I'm so well, sorry. Can I use the restroom? That's what I was going to ask. If you're going to, to we are make on the same us cycle. We all need to go the same now. cycle. Yes. Uh, I don't know anything about cycles in one or, but there's a toilet block in the back. Um, Marshall, 
Can you, uh... No, he, why would he... Why would the guy's name be Marshall? That's his last name. <laughs> Marshall, Marshall. 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 Uh, he has the same... His name is the same as my last name, because I'm not creative. Oh, that's Bring these women to the circular piss trough. James! <laughs> just, uh... The young ladies want to use the block. And, uh... He just nods and uh, kind of makes it clear that he's going to be watching as you walk over to the toilet block. Okay. Uh, he's like, all right, right this way. And he leads uh, Carter and Desmond inside. And again, you... I'm sorry about this, sir, but, you know, our jobs can be on the line here, too. We'll, we'll be out of your hair shortly. I, it's, it's fine. I, it's just, I wasn't expecting it. And I understand. Uh, it's a momentary inconvenience for a lifetime of security. Just bear that in mind. Yeah, no, I, I'm... My boss would want to make sure that it was taken care of. It's just strange that he didn't let me know about this, but it's fine. Um, come on in. And uh, he leads you in to a uh, the main door, and uh, you see that it's completely empty of people right now. There is like a workshop area with large wooden benches that all have like vices fitted to them. There are two lathes. I had to Google what a lathe was, but it's like a big workbench machine that allows you to shape wooden and metal uh, products. Um, the shelves holding all manner of tools and uh, a large fireplace, like taking up a central position in the room is probably used more during the winter months to keep it warm in here for the workers. Wooden beams crisscrossing the ceiling uh, from which hangs a block and tackle. There's sacks of sawdust and fine grade sand, packing crates everywhere and odd pieces of metal just sort of laying around. You also see a small office off to the back and then um, this large, gigantic cast iron safe. Um, and he's like, all right, um, I don't mean to rush you. I know you're doing us a favor here, but uh, we got to get the boys back to work. So have at it. And he cool. brings you over to this safe. And immediately Carter, as a you know <laughs> former cat burglar or whatever, you know that this is a crazy safe. Uh, it'd be very, very hard to break into. Not impossible. Nothing's impossible in this game, um, but big time safe. I like this. So, sound. how do you know if the alloys uh, need to be replaced or not? Simple application of certain chemicals with which uh, reactions shall reveal if their exposure to other chemicals over time will create the uh, weaknesses that we've seen prop up from time to time. And I've got my little, like, just a little dram of fluid. It's just whiskey from the night before. <laughs> like, just daubing it onto the hinges. I'll show you his face on our VTT here if you want to see what he looks like. Oh, yeah. He's a really unsavory looking guy. Oh, ugh. he has yeah. a <laughs> sparkling personality. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you see, he's, he's pretty suave considering. I mean, he's, he, you can't tell him that he's like, he's a pretty well-built dude, uh, except for his face. Uh, it's not well-built. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the face is not well built. Face for radio. Is there, uh, I mean, from this vantage point, I mean, is it, is there any spot hiddening that could be done? Do a spot hidden. You do see that like tarps are, have been thrown on everything. So in that 15 minutes, not only were the people cleared out, but you'd think that these tarps were just put on to like cover up what they're doing. But hey, that's why spot hidden I kind exists. of also want to try, even though it's a garbage stat, like mechanical repair or something like that of like, Hmm. Just to just to gain just to glean something about the machinery. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah unless you absolutely. think that's uh, operate heavy machinery. No, check, no, which no. Is... I mean, they're, it, you're not trying to operate it. You're trying to like gauge it um, yeah. by sight. So yeah, mechanical repair sounds good. And then would you get in that spot hidden there? Unfortunately, I failed it. But um, I mean. I just, I got all that luck, baby. Push Why it. get it and not push it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far off were you? Um, 78 over 60. So I'd have to spend 18 points of luck. Um, and I can tell you, I think you're, we're going to need a hard success here because of the time that they had to cover everything up. A hard success. Okay. Yeah. So that might be too much to spend. Yeah. In might, that case. Might be push worthy. Then, then yeah, I'll push. Um. And um, with the idea that, like, if I if they have to, if I get the bums rush, maybe that commotion can create an opportunity for someone else on the mystery squad. Um, um, so I will really lean in, and ob I will be obviously neglecting my work on the safe to ogle what's going on in the workshop. Okay. 
Uh, are we on like some sort of catwalk overlooking things? Or are we level with all that no, stuff? No, you're you're. There's only one floor. It's a, it's a right high at the ceiling. safe door, right? Yeah. Great. Then I'll right walk over and I'll, I'll I'll try to choose a um, moment to uh, where um, Marshall isn't looking to look underneath one of those tarps, and that's how I'll push. Okay, that's your push. I like that because obviously the failure is obvious. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. I got to beat sixty. Yeah. Here we go. Success, but a regular success. Okay, that's good. I mean, that's sort of like you're fine. I, the 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 uh, hard success would give you a little more information, but you do lift up and you look under there. Um, here's what you see. It's a quick little peek, but you see a blueprint. Hmm. That looks just like, you know, do you have any engineering or anything like that? Like, is that in your wheelhouse or so. any, that's not really your style, you're a writer. Yeah. Um, so it's very foreign to you, but like it also, even if I, I don't know nothing about architecture, if somebody gave me blueprints to a building, I'd be like, oh, it's a building. This looks really far out there, whatever is trying to be uh, created. Hmm. And the, the metal that's laying around uh, is like shaped in such strange ways. Whatever they're working on is pretty wild. That's all you see. Okay. And uh, as you drop the tarp back down, he turns and look at you like just as your hand releases the tarp. It's like, everything all right? Uh, buttered and all right. In fact, it looks as though um, your safe is uh, less pregnable than, than we might have thought. Well, I might beg to differ. Oh, well, my associate here has a keener eye than I at these sorts of um, fine technical details. First of all, I failed my mechanical repair rule uh, <laughs> and chose not to spend 19 points of luck on it. Uh, but Troy, I do want to do a locksmith roll on this fucking safe. You can't put okay. me in front of a safe and have me not try this. What's the goal here? Are you trying to unlock the safe? I want to show him that it's broken by opening it. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Man versus machine. What Hardest lock you've ever seen in your life. You can just, you just know. You look at it. You're like, what the fuck did they do here? It doesn't matter. Because I got a 13 under 48. Motherfucker. <laughs> is that a... <laughs> All right, so what is that? That's Could definitely hard. How much, lo- like, do you, would you need to spend if you... Oh, yeah, what do I need to do to get down to... I got to get to extreme... Yeah, what's your what's fifth? the what's your total locksmith? Forty eight. So forty eight. So one fifth of that, right? No, one like is a, nine and a something. Like a nine. Yeah, nine, nine would be forty five. Divided by five. So nine point six. Yeah. So just get under under ten. Get okay, it down so, to nine. So you spend nine right, points so spend of luck. Four points of luck. Oh. Four points of yeah. luck to nice. make it an extreme. Oh Love my it. god. So excited. Oh my god. <laughs> the whole thing fucking killing us. With an extreme success. Legend. You unlock the safe. <laughs> and the speed as wi- at which Frank Marshall rushes towards that door to slam it. It just boom boom. It kind of knocks you back. And he's like, uh, wait, 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 what's going on here? Is there something wrong with the safe? Yes. I can't believe you didn't see this before. How did you? And he reaches in and he's got like a keychain, uh, and he takes a key and he locks it. And he's like, I checked this myself this morning and didn't have any problems. I told um, you, man, it's the climate up here in Derby Derby, whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> All right. It's- I, I, I've got to call. I've got to call my employer. You, you've, you've got to, you've got to leave. We're, we're fine. We've got guards here. I'm not worried about anything happening. Well, before but, you call uh, your employer, sir, don't, don't you think you should, I think you should give us your key so that we can make sure that we know exactly where the flaw lies. Um, <laughs> the, the pins uh, uh, are clearly not making contact well. We need to uh, make you. You don't have to worry about us opening it. We just no. opened it. I, I can't, Before I can't do that. The lock. I can't do that. There's no, we're going to just increase security, make sure nobody uh, can get in here. And um, I, I, I appreciate your time, but uh, this, this is, uh, this is very important that I, 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 I need to, I need to do some things. So, um, uh, you don't want us to fix the safe that's broken? Jim, Murray! And, uh, no, Murray! Jim. Meanwhile, meanwhile, let's go to the ladies and see what they've been up to. Uh, so he's calling the, 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 the guards over. One of them's kind of watching you as you walk towards the toilet block. Um, 
Do you have any ulterior motives over here with a guy that's kind of casually paying attention to you and then also watching the warehouse? Yeah, I want to, I mean, I want to kind of do like a spot hidden, see if there's any like entry, other entry points, anything Mm -hmm. that like maybe is of interest to this whole like government thing that we're finding out about. And as we are like kind of looking around, I just want to make it as uncomfortable for this gentleman as possible. Like we're talking periods, we're talking flows, we're talking cramps, <laughs> we're talking e- like literally everything to make him as uncomfortable as possible in this situation. So he's like, so, la 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 la. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then he um, hears. Also, like, if there's yeah. anything like anywhere to hide potentially, like if we were to try to break in. So he's just kind of like giving you your space, but then he hears Frank. Frank Marshall calling for him, and he's like, uh, "Listen, just uh, finish up, and then uh, and come back over here." And he he runs off and leaves you for a moment. So give me your spot hidden. He right. leaves us. Oh. Fail. <gasps> Fail on the spot hit. Oh my god! Critical success. I rolled uh, a one. One in yes. Oh my god. A critical success. That's okay. Good. <laughs> the Gibran touch, baby. Woo! Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Holy shit. <gasps> Holy shit, uh, indeed. Wow. All right. Here, here's what you notice. It's kind of amazing. Even though you guys, as you, this is all happening at the same time. Like the guards come in, it's like, yeah, guys gotta go, and he's just kind of pushing you out. And Marshall looks very uh, kind of harried by all of this. He's trying to get the guards. They're not physically uh, touching you, but they're like, so sorry, you got, we gotta, we gotta do this. And then you guys are taking a look here, and your keen eyesight notices that that shed door is open. And you go over and like maybe take a peek into it, and it's like it's not used for anything. In fact, it would be a perfect place to hide if you were to try and sneak in here. It looks like it's completely unused. There's no uh, machinery in there, nothing being stored in there. It is just like this empty shed. Um, Would be a great place to sort of sneak into and hide. The toilet block, nothing there of interest. However, you see... All right, so you see the other building. Let's say that there... What can I give you here with a critical success? I want to give you as much 40 as 40 corpses possible. under the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> a pit of bodies being. <laughs> Another <dead>. one! <laughs> oh. Um. Any the, blueprints? Any uh, schematics? You don't, <laughs> any winner? You don't see any blueprints here. You just. Uh, who live, where the hell are those blueprints? You bring them to the toilet block? Instead um, of like posters of Heather Locklear or whatever on the wall, there's <laughs> blueprints. <laughs> You see, uh, like, sort of half buried in the dirt, like it maybe fell off and just kind of got lost, a shipping label. And uh, it catches your eye, and you pick it up, and it says, Randolph Shipping Company, Port Darwin, Northern Territory, Dominion of Australia. Yep, we got one of those already. That's one of the things we saw in the basement, I think. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's just sort of like laying there, like it fell off, uh, you know, a crate or something, laying in the dirt. Okay. I'm going to not pick it up. I'll leave it there, but I'm going to write down, we'll jot down that info. Um, and I just, is, is Marco with me? Like, are we just kind of? Yeah. Okay. This is this is a perfect space. Is this also, building? No, 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 this shed. The shed, yes. Should we hide now? I don't I don't think so. I think they've got I think they got really twitchy about something. But I don't I don't know. Um, is there I know that I did a spot hidden, but like where where are all these workers? Like maybe maybe if we do like a listen, can we like maybe I don't know. My listen's probably shit, but Margo. Like, My listen's we... not the best, but what we're, we're trying to see. Trying to see like where they all went. Like, yeah, yeah could... like how in proximity, like they, where'd they all just scurry off to? Like there's just mm-hmm. like a bunch of cockroaches just. Yeah, give me a, give me, you can do spot hidden or listen. Like, is there, would there be a, like a place below? Are they outside? Cause that would be weird for all of them to just kind of evacuate. Where'd they yeah, all? See... Where'd they all 
run off to? Give, give me a roll, see what you see. You do listen, or you, you want to use your eyes or your ears? Uh, I mean, I could... My eyes. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever's better. <laughs> so I'll roll again? Yeah. Regular success. I failed. <laughs> Nice. But I could spend away. five. I could spend five points to make that. Oh, there's the shame. Um. No, I'll. I'll I don't have a lot of luck. I'll just okay. What What you notice, Margot, with your success is there's a back door to that main workshop that that uh, your allies are in right now. Uh, so it's very possible the workers filed out the back and went into the adjoining large building, which is still pumping. And there's a lot of heat coming from that bro- building. Now that you're out in the back there, you notice there's just like a lot of heat. Maybe there's some sort of furnace. Uh, you knew that there was someone they spoke to yesterday was in a, a mold maker. Um, so maybe there's some sort of like ironworks in there. So you just sort of deduce that most likely the workers slipped out the back and slipped into there or there's another area within that workshop that they're like a downstairs or a room that uh, Carter and Desmond didn't see where they're waiting Hmm. what do you think should we try to hide in this building now so that we can let them in tonight was that the original plan Guys come out and they're like, uh, ladies, we gotta, sorry, we, we, we guys gotta be out of here. I'm so sorry. Let's go. Um, anyways, thank you for your time. Um, we'll be sure to, uh, yeah, be in contact if we need this uh, worked on. Um, Are we, we're with them, Troy? We got like shuffled out. Yeah, right? he's, they're shoveling you yeah. out. They're calling the ladies over and they're not putting their hands on you, but they're sure, coming sure. around and just sort of directing, uh, uh, Margot and Feyruz as well. It's like, so sorry. We just, this is a, you know, this is a top secret business that we're working on here. Sure. We can't well, just, I mean, should we, should we just come back tomorrow to fix the safe or what no, should we no, tell no, our supervisors? So, until I, until I know, um, uh, until I get instructions on what to do, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay. Well, don't forget to call. And then what was it, Whatever Desmond's yeah, the number mic, the, was to his uncle, the, the scoop number, number the scoop. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, cool. We'll be sending you a survey. If you could just fill that out, if you have a second, or you can get a $10 gift certificate to the Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> right, right. Right. All right. Good day. And, uh, he, uh, talks to the, after you're out that little side gate there, he talks to the guard very animatedly. You see that. And then he's pointing at the guards, um, pointing all around there's a lot of like hubbub and then he rushes back into the workshop and if you're outside lingering or if you start to walk down the street it's not long before the machine starts kicking up again in hmm. the workshop that you were just in what did well, you do? well 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 what well, did you find? Mr. Tillinghouse, telling us it seems I've underestimated you no, I've not seen safe cracking like that in all my days hey just you <sighs> did it another back door that you got into yeah Oh, I got all up in it. Oh, it was, what was in it? We didn't see. They freaked the fuck out. First of all, again, like Desmond said, I was amazing. Guys, this safe, I, I don't I can say it now that we're out here. This safe is fucking terrifying. This is the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I could barely put together what was going on. It was like the Cadillac of safes. Uh and but did that stop Carter Tilling asked? I don't think so. So I just wanted to show the guy, you know, I don't know, I was talking out of my ass. I was like, look, the safe is broken. And I fucking cracked the shit out of it. Opened it up, and he immediately closed that thing. Like, I don't know what is in there, but they were... And then that kicked up all the dust, and that's why suddenly we're out here. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Do you think that there will be more peep underneath one of, I got a peep underneath one of their tarps. Whatever they're making under there. I just caught a brief glimpse of the, of the schematic. Don't look like nothing I've ever seen before. And the metal, shaped in strange, dare I say, non-Euclidean ways. <laughs> Do you know what I found? I found in the back shed huh? a shipping label from the Randolph Shipping Company. Uh-huh. Australia? What did I tell you? I told you this might be a hub for all of the... The, the shipment of, of, of these stolen artifacts. Yeah. But then what are they making? They're, they're shipping, but they're also making something. And Oh, that's beyond me. I have no idea. Yes. Huh. Are we going to try to break in later? I, I feel like there might be extra security tonight now that we did well, the safe thing. That's a good point. 
That is a good point. I think it might be very dangerous. Perhaps we can come on a, on a night that they wouldn't be suspecting us. Oh, that's just going to kill more time. I'm desperate think? to see what, what's what's going on down there. Oh, I would love to know. We can stroll back over here at night time and see what the deal is and make a call. Okay. If we see that it's just like completely on lockdown and there's a million guards, then maybe it's not the best idea, but... So we're going to have to be very careful because even though uh, their there's, there's suspicions are arising now, but there was the, at the time at Margot, I, and, I, and I could be absolutely paranoid about this, but it seemed as though I heard a noise and I didn't know if somebody was in that building. But there might also just be people on guard in places that we wouldn't suspect, is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Uh, and Troy, that what that building isn't that, that me and Margot were in wasn't the same that we thought that the workers might be that the second the second. No, you were near that second one that was emitting heat, so maybe there's some sort of ironworks in there, but you couldn't see into that. There's no windows yeah, or anything. But that, that wasn't the same one that we were surveying from the night before the day before um you could see all into the yard you could see both buildings yeah but now you're up close you could see a little bit differently but yeah you you saw all four of the edifices toilet shed two big workshops okay and we went into one of the workshops but not the other but not the other one yeah i still Um, feel confident that we were sneaky enough when we were surveying but yeah maybe we come back tonight and see how it is, and either way, we leave tomorrow morning because we need to get back to London. Yes. Desmond, do you think your uncle would have any way to figure out any connections, or maybe you have them, to figure out if this government contract actually exists? Is this a, a cover story by Gavigan to his own workers, or is this an actual thing? I suppose I could... I could try. Um, Grease some wheels, talk to somebody, call somebody up. Um, and yeah, I mean, if I got on the phone, I guess I could put the resources of the scoop into trying to see if I could gather the legitimacy of this story about the government contract. Like we might, might not even have to, you know, try to find out what it is that they're making, just if it even exists. It's mm-hmm. really true. Yeah. Um, you can definitely call your uncle and ask him to look into it. He's got connections. Uh, I will do just that. Um, and just like, yeah, on, on the horn. It's like, Mickey oh, Olson. Nephew, what's going <laughs> yes, on yes, out yes. there? Mickey Olson. I don't actually care about yeah. the story. Totally I just here. wanted him to call. You said you'd be back at the scoop oh. offices a week ago. Where have you been? Following up on several stories there. Um, <laughs> had to find out what was going on. Got a line on handsome manufacturing. Uh, I need some words. These papers aren't going to print themselves. I got, I got, oh, I got a big story ready to blow. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna sell a thousand papes, Uncle. Look, there, Go there's on, connections then. running all over the, all over the realm. But I need to know what's going on at Henson Manufacturing, at Derby. If they've got a government contract in place, if it's not, in manufacturing. Then that's a cover story that they're using to make something for a private individual. A, a deeper, stranger purpose that I think might be connected to Mr. Gavigan of the Penhew Foundation. Connected to Gavigan, really? Oh, wait. I've got a guy uh, who knows a little bit about uh, certain businesses and the way that they're registered. Let me give him a call and uh, you give me a call back in a couple hours and I'll let you know what I find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair before you. Bye then. I love you. Love to you and yours. <laughs> You're my nephew. Yeah. What, is that weird? <laughs> you sweet boy. <laughs> you sweet man. You sweet, sweet man. my sister's son. I love him. That's As right. if he was my own son. <laughs> he says to the guy that is also you. working at the school. <laughs> Why is that strange? That I tell my nephew that I love him. He's a very affectionate man. Uh, <laughs> Mickey Mahoney's on it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, well... What the fuck do we do? <laughs> I just want to get in there. Just yeah, so where's the plan? Are you going to wait till dark and try and break yeah. into the joint? It seems That's like you got a place thing. you could hide if you hop the fence or whatnot, but uh, I think, now... Yeah, get over the fence, get in there, 
wait, wait to see the rotations of the guards and then get into that damn workshop. Yeah. The one negative thing that has happened and uh, that uh, Frank Marshall uh, sort of intimated is that like, now that the safe doesn't work, we have to yeah. up our security. So there might be yeah, more like, than two people there. Right. Uh, right. So something to consider. Blow but back. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the plan, um, then we can just fast forward to a couple hours later, you calling back your uncle, seeing if he was able to find out that information. All right, Mickey, what's the scoop? So I uh, talked to my man at the House of Records, and uh, he, he he can't find a lot of information on this Henson manufacturing. Seems it was owned by a gentleman by the name of Arthur Henson, and uh, it was it was sold, and and uh, no one really knows what happened to Henson. Maybe he got a good price and went into uh, to an early retirement. Now uh, there's just not a lot of information. It could very well be that there is some government work, and that's why there isn't any uh, any any info on what what goes on there. Well, it could be that that's a cover story. I wish I had, I wish I had more for you, but I, uh, it's, it seems like uh, there's, there's a little too little information about Henson manufacturing out there. Hmm. Inconclusive, but suspiciously so. Well, it's not what I was hoping for, but the picture's coming ever more into focus over time. We'll have some more uh, details for you later. Um, if you don't hear from me, get some bail money ready for Darby. About to do a smash and grab. Hey, whatever you're doing out there, just be safe. Oh, Don't on. want to be going to my sister and saying that she doesn't have a son anymore because you died trying to get a scoop. Oh, don't you worry, none. I won't put myself <laughs> in too much danger. But there are causes for which one must put everything on the line. All right. Damn it, Very I well, you well. Good to talk to you. Goodbye. Hopefully not forever. I love you. God, strange <laughs> man. <laughs> 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 oh, God bless, bless him. Bless him. Um, I go back to the gang. It's like, well, unfortunately, not much more than uh, than we had already in theory. Um, suspiciously little information. We're dealing with powers able to make themselves disappear. One wonders where Mr. Henson is in all of this. Or he seems to have disappeared entirely. It's thought to retirement, but given the darkness of what's beginning to swirl around Gavigan in this lot, Starting to wonder if retirement is actually what happened to him. I mean, he probably lived in this town. If we had more time, we could try to track down where he went. He must have been local. Too right. Well, I suppose we can spend the night looking up his last whereabouts, or we can spend the night jumping a fence. You know where I'm at. <laughs> Pansy hose? D- yeah, yes, please. This time? Not terribly breathable, is it? <laughs> no. Okay. Yes, my we, legs we are freezing. It, as framing. long as they're made out of silk and are period specific to the time we live in now. It's just like, now it's not <laughs> raining. Before it was raining, so it was hard. So maybe this time it'll work. All right, this is fine. We don't have to do it. Just... No, no, I'll take your panties. Oh, no. I'll take your, I mean. <clears throat> it just seems to be that every time we're, we're faulty on information, I, I tend to hear loud typing in all caps. <laughs> A cosmic horror unto itself. <laughs> Truly, I must be hallucinating. <laughs> the sound of a million fingers frantically <laughs> smashing keyboards. All at once. Uh, uh, all right, so we'll say it's nighttime. You guys have a vantage point across the street that Margot and Feyruz have already scouted out, so you could actually go there again if you want and yeah. see, like, we could. what yeah. can you say? Let's Cozy up for a bit. Got a pretty sweet spot upstairs if you want to come. Let's okay. go to the sweet spot then. And yeah, from that vantage point, can we see maybe, we've been told there's two security guards normally, Night Watchmen, but have they beefed it up? Are there, are there more on the prowl yeah. from what we can tell up here? All right, you're watching now. Um, I don't know, you know, it's late. You do see uh, one guard walking about uh, the grounds themselves, outdoors. He's got a flashlight and he's just kind of meandering. And then eventually they'll kind of go back to the main gate and sit in the, it's not really a guard house, but it's, there's a place for him to sit. And then he'll get up every once in a while and continue to walk around. Likewise, within the two major workshops, you see flashlights bopping around. So it looks like they've added at least one other security guard, one in each of the main buildings. No one in the shed, no one in the toilet. Um, so you know you've got at least one in each workshop and then someone on the grounds. The, uh, the, the wall to get over is 10 feet high. 
Okay. Um, um, that's what you know. What okay. is the shed made out of? <laughs> Plaster. No, it's made out of wood. It's a wooden shed. And uh, by the way, there's there's still that main gate to go in that's locked, that's big enough for cars and horse carts to come in. And then there's the side gate, which also appears to be locked. The carts are, have locked themselves in. Um, but yeah, the shed is made out of wood, whereas the building is a mix of wood and metal. Is there, I'm just throwing, I'm just spitballing here, guys. Is there a way to get ourselves onto the property and create what I like to call a distraction by lighting that fucking shed on fire? <laughs> or something oh. to draw everybody out? We would be putting ourselves in more danger. Well, we could try However. to start like a more controlled fire where we, we, we light something that will grow slowly so we can run away. I mean, you said that shed was empty, right? There's nothing in there? Yeah, maybe a couple gardening tools. Why, um, why focus on a shed? If we're going to light someone on fire, why not light one of the blading workshops on fire? Well, because we want to check those out. We also don't want to die inside of this. We'll take down the man, Desmond. Don't worry. (laughs) (laughs) Capitalism will burn in the flames of our vengeance. Yes, yes, proletariat, Mm. etc., (laughs) etc. But, I mean, yeah, maybe we could just, like, find some shit and light it on fire inside that shit. <laughs> and then while they're, these jokers are out checking that out, sneak right on in to the... S- scale the wall? Main facilities. Well, first we gotta... I can think... I, I could try to lockpick the side gate. Could try to get in that way. As are you know, you? I am amazing. Lord knows I, I am not um, unamenable to uh, <laughs> things getting lit on fire. Just to... Yeah, while we're in a while we're in a brainstorm, sure. While yeah, we're, in a we're bl- blasting a bio. Carter throws a tennis ball at you. Yeah, Near t- <laughs> yeah. While we're in the sort of blue sky phase, um, no bad ideas. Let's um, let's uh, if if you could pick the lock to get one person in to that initial guardhouse, and that one guard, what's out there on the grounds, could be taken out. Someone could take their uniform, take their rounds. Then you'd have the run of the then you'd have the run of the whole um quarry. Uh huh, and then we light that guy on fire. <laughs> and now we're talking. And then we pee on the desk. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just getting. Um, I'm just waiting for Margot to throw in that we dose him with his own drugs and overkill him. <laughs> uh, my my only concern here is that if we do light something on fire, is that it will draw more attention. Yeah. Uh, and more people will come to the aid and and, and, and see if there were fires whereabouts and, and then we will essentially have have made it more complicated for ourselves. That's and true. Necessary. You I said like you were good at brawling, Desmond. So you, you really think it's confident you could take out uh, one of the guards? I think if there's one thing that can be sure about people who are confident with brawling, then they're always actually good at brawling. <laughs> <laughs> um, now are we talking take out like or just knock choke out, out? Um, knock out okay knock, uh, yeah just Great. little take take a little nap take him off the board yeah shh shh, shh. quiet now <laughs> yes yes yeah. okay time to go um, far and away <laughs> right, so you've, now you've I, I'm imagining you're, you're really taking your time up there watching so you've got the pacing down yeah. you don't notice yes. anything out of place except that they do seem to switch okay so you see still you still think maybe three unless there are two in any of these buildings one of them they'll switch fresh eyes somebody goes inside you think that there's a time if you didn't want to hop over the fence that while the one outside is doing their rounds Carter could go and try to unlock that gate and then one of you could stealth in or multiple of you could stealth in and do some sort of brawl stealth distraction type situation. Uh, so just walk me through this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So Carter can ideally open up. <laughs> Watch it all go to shit when I can't even open up this chain right. link fence. Yeah, this is like a, the Ocean's Eleven. Like you're planning it out and we see it go perfectly. And then you start uh, So, yeah. <laughs> Carter would go in. I'll look, oh, all right, guys, I'm going to go in. I'm just drawing this with pebbles and sticks. Go in, open up the side gate. Once I'm in there, uh, whoever has the best, let's say, whoever feels more confident in their stealthy abilities can go in. Those who don't can hide in that shed. 
waiting right. for some sort of signal. And those who want to stealth their way in, what do you propose we do? Uh, well, then it's a matter of getting over to this guard station. Uh, maybe it's a two-man job. Uh, somebody distracts for a short minute while the other person cold cocks the shit out of the guy. Uh, then it's a matter of putting on the uniform. And then uh, the story writes itself after that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, wh- well, I guess we should talk a little further. <laughs> what's the security? What's the faux security guard? It walks in. Are they the only one that's gathering intel? Or are we going to try to all <clears throat> spread out from that point forward? Well, I feel as though if there are two, if there are still two security guards, and how many, Troy, do we know at this point how many there are? You feel like there's at least three. There's three. You feel confident in three. Might be more. One in each workshop and the workmen in the in the front gate. Yeah. Now, are, when we are observing their their watch, do they seem to cross paths at all? Or is there a certain circuit that they... Because we very well, and I say this in, a, in care, we very well, even if you are in uniform, somebody else may realize that you're not who they saw 20 minutes ago and be suspicious. And also, if you are not on your routine watch circuit, that might also raise some alarms. So if there were, in, in, assuming that their, their watch uh, circuit, they don't cross paths, it would, maybe for, for the sake of appearances, if there was a person in that uniform to stay on that watch path to keep the appearances that all is well. Yeah, is there like a from your like observation? A, it seems like yeah, I was going to say somewhere between forty-five for like, minutes and an hour and a half is when they switch. But other than that, they didn't have any sort of cross pollination. They're all stayed in their zones, but then they there's some sort of rotation that's okay. going on. All right, so so we have that's a time frame. Time. That's the yeah. time frame. Yes. Okay. And they're not. And they're not. They're never bothering to look in that shed. You have not, no, they're not even going near the shed. The guy's doing his rounds, and so he kind of goes around the back of the building, but it, you're just watching the direction of the flashlight. The flashlight is pretty much focused on the uh, exterior doors of the building. Okay. All right. So Carter opens the gates. Yep. Someone s- sneaks with Desmond to the guard station so they can okay. take out a guard. And who, who would like to do that? I feel like half and half stealthy today okay. <laughs> I'm confident in my let's out of game I've got a 60 on myself who, who I have a 46 go? yeah okay so maybe I'll run into the shed Carter and I can wait in the shed great you <laughs> go I to the can... shed Gibran and I will take care of the take care of the guard and then once we've swapped uniforms then you three will have the run of the place um, and I'll see if I can keep up appearances so that no one's a wiser yeah, wait till you see Muscles Gibran go to work. <laughs> and if you see anything, when we get run of the place, let me know. I brought my camera. We will take pictures of what we see. Yes. Okay. Great. Love all right. Off. Uh, all right, so we go to enact the plan. Stealth up. You don't really need to sneak up at this point until you get inside. That's when you want to sort of not Carter's doing attention. it anyway. Yeah. Just to get in the vibe. Flavor stealth. No. Yeah. And zone. you get up to that side gate, you time it in such a way that you know the guard is now on his rounds and not standing at that guard house. Uh, give me a locksmith roll. <laughs> I don't like that face. I don't like, I don't like this, face. this uh this body language. That wasn't good. That was a 90 over ah. 48. Goop. Oh no. We're gonna Seems push it. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. It's all Carter. come down to this. <laughs> all right, Carter was using his typical little doodads that he has. You know, knows that the entire operation <laughs> sort of hinges on them being able to enter the premises. Uh, it's like, you know, knows everyone's watching him. It's like, oh, fucking shit. Shit. Okay, hold on. And like puts, takes the clothes away. Or takes the clothes away. Jesus. Takes the, the, <laughs> the, his little bits away. Mm-hmm. Size gives a reluctant side look to Feruz and then pulls out this bobby pin that she gave him in season one when she locked un- unlocked every DMV 
door in the <laughs> building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you have your professional kit. You put it aside. Yeah, and you I'm pull like, out yeah. Favorite yeah. Bobby Fit. <laughs> okay. Let's try this again. I believe in you. <laughs> Oh no. I'm not confident about this look either. Oh no. (laughs) It's worse. (laughs) Worse than 90? It's a 96. What is your locksmith roll? 40. What is your locksmith skill? (gasps) So that's a fumble. Oh no. 96 to 100. (laughs) Fumble on a push (laughs) if your skill is less than 50. Oh no. Well, supposed to bend the bobby piece. It's nice knowing you. It. You stick the pin in, and something that you do in trying to unlock it just oh. makes a loud, like metallic clicking sound. And all of you that are standing there see the flashlight of the guard flash over towards you guys. Yuck. And he starts coming really quickly <gasps> over there with the light. <gasps> and we'll see you next week. No! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> a fumble on a push! God. That's the door. Dilly has touch, baby. The old Dilly has he opened touch. Fort Knox earlier that <laughs> day. <laughs> cracked in. Oh my God, of course that happens. Oh, Amazing. Boy. What if I was like, oh wait, it's actually a 22. <laughs> See? Man. No one's fudging die rolls here. <laughs>